Hey everyone, this is Brian Fairman from Black Hills Information Security. I'm going to be teaching the advanced testing, evaluating, and breaking of security software course that will be offered Black Hat Asia 2016 on March 29th and the 30th. And I have the link down here at the bottom of this slide if you guys want to go check out the course description, see some of the awesome things we're going to be covering in the class, and go ahead and get signed up while there's still time. And so today what I wanted to talk about, something kind of related to the class, um, the other day I was doing a spear phishing assessment for a customer and the payload delivery that I wanted to use, the method of payload delivery, was a Word document with a macro in it. Pretty common, but still very, very effective. And the issue that I ran into is when I, when I tried to send this document, I found that email providers are actually starting to look at the document, look at the macro in the document, and determine if it's malicious or not. And it, it was being blocked. And so what I wanted to do here is just kind of walk you guys through uh, what I looked at and kind of how to get around this. So I'm going to pop over here. I'm on up on a, a DigitalOcean instance. I freshly installed PowerShell Empire. I went ahead, I, I pulled it down from their Git, Git repo, got it all installed, up and running, easy to do, excellent tool. And so you can see I'm in the directory here. So let's go ahead and let's run Empire. All right, so it loads up. Um, we can see we have 146 modules available, zero listeners, zero agents. And so first thing we want to do is we want to check out listeners. Tells us no listeners currently active. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make one. So let's do um, let's do options, and we can look, and we can see we have a couple different settings that are available to us. Quite a few different settings. Most of these actually um, we can just leave as default for now. Um, this is the IP address that I'll go ahead and I'll use along with the port. And this is also another port setting down here. This is the, the address uh, to which our agent is going to call back to once, once we get that set up and going, and we'll, we'll step through that next. Uh, the type of payload is going to be a native payload. We're just gonna use the native uh, Empire payload for this. The only thing I'm gonna change here is just the name of the listener. You can leave it as test, but I don't know, I don't really like that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do set name, full metal cache. That's my uh, my handle, so you can also follow me on Twitter at Full Metal Cash if you'd like to. All right, and after that, I'll just type execute. And so now that listener is going, we can do list, and we can see I now have a listener named Full Metal Cash uh, that's listening on this address in this port with a native type payload. So the next thing I want to do is I want to generate up an agent uh, or a stager. I'm sorry. Um, to do that, I'm going to do a use stager. Uh, the stager I'm going to do is a macro, and I'm going to go ahead and specify the listener to which this stager should call back. So just using the same name here. So use stager macro full metal cache. All right, now I'm in this next menu. See, I have stager macro. Here we also have some options. If I, uh, you know, we have a couple different things we can set. And the thing that automatically set for us was the listener, just because we specified it on this line. So it's attached to this listener. That's where it's going to call back. And once I have this, once I have this set up, I can go ahead and I can just do execute. I don't really need to change anything else at this point. All right, and so it tells us stage your output written to temp macro. Cool. So let's go ahead and let's grab that. I'm going to exit out. The cool thing with Empire, one of the many cool things, is that that listener is going to keep running even though I exit out of, of this command command prompt. Cool. So let's go ahead and let's cat out temp macro. And here's the macro that it generated for us. I'm going to grab this all the way up to the sub auto open, copy it, and let's open up a Word document. New. So I'm on a Mac, so over here I'm going to do View, Macros, and at this point you can just type in whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to type in Test, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and type that in, hit Enter. Uh, the reason it doesn't matter is because I'm going to just delete all this anyways. And then I'm going to paste in that macro that we got from the other screen. And you can see it here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And let's type something in here. Let's do, it's legit. Just so they know that it's good to go, everything's fine, uh, you should probably just go ahead and do whatever it tells you to. So let's save it. Desktop, let's just call it legit. I'm gonna save it as a dot docm file, like so. 
save. All right, let's go ahead and minimize these. We can find it. Here we go, there's our document. So I'm gonna open up my mailer. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and mail this to myself at gmail.com. And you have to see this. Really, right? Seems enticing. <laughs> Let's go ahead and attach, do this. Oh look, look, virus detected. What is what is that? A virus detected? Let's try and send it. Note there are errors attached in your file. Send this message without these attachments. All right, so what's happening? So if we think about this, it, it can't possibly be that it's blocking this document just because it has a macro. There are legitimate purposes for macros. Uh, we may not see them that much in our field. We may not use them for legitimate purposes as much in our field, um, and that's fine. But the, the the fact is is that they wouldn't have this macro feature if you couldn't use macros for legitimate purposes, right? I mean, sometimes it does seem like the tools that could put out, I mean, what else would you use them for? But it, it is the case that you can use these macros for legitimate purposes. And so email providers aren't going to block you just because you're sending, just because your document has a macro in it. I mean, hopefully not anyways, right? So I thought that they must be looking at some aspect of the macro. And what I found was that it's actually quite simple in this case and at this point. And I found uh, two mail providers that are doing this, both Gmail and GMX Mail, are two providers that are both looking at this exact same thing. So what is it? Let's go ahead and let's open up our document. Let's do edit. Let's look through here. Really, all they're doing, and I kid you not, is they're looking for the word PowerShell. That's it. If they're detecting the word PowerShell in your macro, um, they will likely stop it. And so how do we get around that? Quite simple. We just break it up into multiple lines. So all we're doing here is we've declared a variable dim str as string. We have a string variable. And we're just going through and we're building up this string. And at the end, we have uh, one long string that's composed of all this text. So let's just let's make add in an extra command. So I just put a double quote after the first L in PowerShell. And then on this next line, I'm going to do str equals str plus double quote and the rest of this line. So at the end of this, once I get down here, I'm going to end up with the exact same thing that I had before. The difference is, is that I don't have the full word PowerShell in here. So let's go ahead and close up. I'm going to save this. Let's go ahead and remove that attachment. And let's try and attach it again. And look at that. <laughs> Good to go. No issues. It has to be okay, right? It doesn't have the word PowerShell in it anymore, so it must be fine. So I'm going to send it to myself. Send. Send. Great. That's awesome. I'm going to open up the terminal. And I'm going to hop back into Empire. All right, we see my listener still active. So I'm going to hop over here. Saying Windows is not genuine, that's that's a lie. I have the key in for whatever reason it didn't activate. But, um, so let's go ahead and let's download this. Save. Let's open it up. And enable editing. Enable content. And, oh, dang it, can't compile. Can't find the project or library. Hmm, what's going on here? All right, so let's hop back over here. I'll show you what the issue is now. Let's go here. All right, so the issue is um, is that uh, you know as it is, it will it may work in some environments. This macro may work in some environments depending on how you have things set up, depending on how you put this macro in. It, it can work like this, but it, there are a lot of times when it may not work as is. The reason being is so. Remember up here, I mentioned we we've declared this variable str as a string. All right. If you look down here, you'll notice that we haven't actually declared um, this variable str computer. We're just assigning a value to it without actually declaring it first, and it's getting a little bit angry about that. It doesn't see the declaration happening anywhere, and so it doesn't know what str computer is um, or what it should be. And so 
Um, we have that in a couple other places as well, too. We have this OBJ WMI service, uh, OBJ startup, OBJ config, uh, OBJ process, and then the very sneaky one is the INT process ID down here. And so how do we get around that? Well, let's just declare those variables. And so the cool thing is, is that we don't actually have to give them a type. Um, up here we gave it a type uh, explicitly. We don't necessarily have to do that here. It will implicitly determine the type of the variable once we assign a value to it. So I'm just going to do dim str computer, dim obj wmi service, dim obj config, dim obj process, and the sneaky one, dim int process id. Make sure you get the capitals right, capitalization right. Um, obj wmi service, obj config, process, int process id. Okay, and so this is something I actually have uh, implemented on my local version of PowerShell Empire. I went ahead and I just put these declarations in the template so that when I generate this macro, I don't have to go back through and do this every single time. And that's something I'm going to try to push up uh, to the main repository before too long, um, see if the, the original um, the producers of this, um, you know, will think that this is a good idea and might be helpful to everyone. Um, I personally find it helpful, so um, you, you may as well, too. Um, so, so I've got that in here. I'm going to, go ahead and I'm going to close this. I'm going to save it again. I'm going to compose email, fullmetalcache.gmail.com new doc check it out now all right let's attach let's send so i've got my listener up everything's sent let's hop back over here okay stop the debugger grab the new doc save it Open, enable editing, uh, enable content. Oh, dang it. What did I miss? I missed OBJ startup. All right. So to save a little bit of time, sorry about that. Let's just do dim OBJ startup. All right. So I've got it in there. Stop the debugger. Save it. Enable editing. Enable content. Okay, good to go. I got everything in that time. Let's hop back over here. Oh, oh, check it out. We got a connection back. All right. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to type agents. So here's our agent. That's the the connection that we just made. So I'm going to do interact tm autocomplete, and let's do sysinfo. Takes a second, and there we go. And so, so I have the connection there. I could do something like uh, shell, who am I? And it tells me, which I already have with the sysinfo, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Net user BCF. Oops. Shell net user BCF. All right, awesome. I could see it's part of the administrator. Awesome, um, and so I could I could go ahead and I can start doing uh, a lot of really really cool things. But the the main purpose of this, uh, the main thing that I really wanted to show you, uh, was just how um, you you can modify that macro that's generated just a little bit. You make just one small change, and you get around that that um, email filtering that's now in place. Are they are they going to step up their game? Are they going to start looking for other aspects? Yeah, probably. I mean, they're probably going to start going through. They're probably going to, um, you know, let's open this back up again. They'll probably start looking at other um, aspects of this template, such as, you know, looking for these three functions or, um, you know, looking for um, this series of calls or something, you know. But but the fact is, is that we're always going to be able to find a way around this. I guarantee it um, that we can make just small little changes. If all they're doing is static analysis on this macro, I bet we can make small little changes. We can get around it. And so this is just kind of the starting point showing you um, that, you know, if they come out with another um, another protection, quote unquote, uh, something to stop you, um, you know, just how you can go in, you can modify this a little bit, obfuscate it, so to speak, and get around those protections.
So um, I hope all of you in, have enjoyed this. Um, again, my name is Brian Furman uh, from Black Hills Information Security. Um, if you enjoyed this presentation, uh, you want to see more really cool stuff like this, um, you know, much more in depth, um, much, uh, you know, a lot of custom tools, a lot of really cool things uh, related to bypassing security tools that are out there, definitely. Uh, consider taking my class, uh, Advanced Testing, Evaluating, and Breaking of Security Software, Black Hat Asia 2016, March 29th, 30th. Awesome. Thank you.